In this video, I'll be showing you how to create your own sword fight game on Roblox so you can fight other players, be the last one standing, earn rewards and much more that will help you learn how to script. Now make sure you watch all this video, you don't want to miss any of it because I'm going to be teaching you how you can make your first game on Roblox with scripting and you'll be able to publish it and even potentially earn Robux from it, so you don't want to miss out on that. If you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you never miss out when I upload a brand new video. To start off with, what we're going to do is we're going to go and click on base plate. And this is going to create a blank space where we can start making our sword fight game. So wait for it to load. And then what we're going to do is just click this tutorials away. And we also don't need this game window. The two windows that we are going to need though, well actually the three windows that we're going to need is the... Uh, Explorer which is over here we're gonna need the properties tab and we're also gonna need the output and we don't need the toolbox yet but we might be using it uh, later on so let's just go ahead and make this full screen and we can begin by firstly creating a lobby for the players to stand in when the game isn't running or if they get kicked out so I'm just gonna scale down the base plate and I'm going to do this quite quickly because it's quite simple making a base plate and it doesn't have to be too uh, too good. So we're just going to go into the base plate and we're going to change the top surface to smooth and we can change the material as well. I'm just going to change mine to uh, pebble and we'll make it uh, we'll make it green. Okay, so there's my lobby. I'm just going to rename the base plate to lobby base. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a spawn location onto this base, okay? And what we're going to do is double click the spawn to get rid of this uh, decal. And then we're going to make the uh, spawn location transparent. And we're going to set anchored to true and make sure can collide is false so that the players can walk through it. It doesn't look like a, a brick which, which they will stand on. So... What we're going to do is we're going to find the spawn location and we're just going to duplicate it a couple of times and place them around the lobby so there are lots of different places to spawn. And once we've done that, you can just group everything together in the Explorer tab by clicking on the first one, holding down Shift and clicking on the last item. Then you're going to press Control and G or Command G if you're on a Mac and we're going to call this Lobby. So if we go and spawn into the game, we should land on our green lobby. Let's wait for it. And there we go. We've spawned on one of our spawns. And there we go. That's the lobby complete. Next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make a map for the players to fight on. So because this is a sword fight game, we will do two maps and then we'll be able to script so that the game will randomly choose uh, one map out of the two each round. So let's get started by making a desert map. So we're inserting a part. I'm just going to make it quite uh, quite long and quite wide as well so that there's enough space to walk around in. We're going to change the material to... Actually, we'll change the colour first to a, a dark... Well, not dark. a uh, Quite a light, uh, pale yellow. And then we're going to change the material to... Let's have a look. We'll do sand. And let's let's go and add some walls so that the player can't fall off the map. We're just going to make them quite simple. Drag them along. Whoops. We'll drag that again. Just over here. And then we're going to just scale the wall up so that they can't jump over it. And then we're going to duplicate it with Control D or Command D. I'm going to drag it over to the other side. Like this. There we go. And then we're just going to take both of these walls, select them, duplicate them again. Let's just turn off collision so that they don't spawn on top. So we've made a duplicate and now I'm pressing Control R to rotate them. So now we have our border walls surrounding the map. What we want to do is we want to change the name to border wall. In fact, let's just select all of the walls apart from the base and call them border wall. We're going to set transparency to 1. Make sure that they're anchored 
and we're also going to set can collide to true so that the players they can't basically walk through them um okay let's just move these this this wall back because it's not at the edge of the base like that and let's just check the other wall make sure that that is at the edge of the base there we go let's do this a little bit more there we go oops okay so we've got the walls all in place so we can select them again and make sure transparency is set to one whoops we don't want to do that to the base we want to keep the base transparency zero but now if we go and click play here and we spawn in our map we shouldn't be able to fall off the edge uh, okay we didn't spawn on the map let's try that again clicking play here and uh, I, I know the the base is not anchored so we need to anchor the base so it doesn't fall off the map and we can stand on it so anchor just means that it's locked and it won't fall down so here we go we're in our map and let's just go and walk to the edge of the map and try and jump off and you can see we can't walk off we're restricted by the walls that we just made okay so that is the the map let's just go into the toolbox and add some cacti from free models you can build them yourself if you want uh, you can make your map look much better than mine i'm just going to insert some cacti and we can also get rid of this little plant so we just want this cactus let's just make sure there's nothing bad inside of these parts nope they all look good so i'm going to take the cactus and we're just going to duplicate and move them around the map Okay, there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the floor and change the name to floor so we know what it is. Then I'm going to select everything on our map. I'm going to press Control G or Command G on a map to group all together. And we're going to call this Desert Map. Now we just need to add some spawns into this map. So it's not going to be a spawn location because a spawn location puts you back on that spawn when you reset but we want to put our players on a spawn in the map when the game's starting so we're going to insert some basic parts and later on we'll use these to teleport the player onto the map so we're going to just create our part we're just going to change the, the part name to spawn part or spawn let's call it spawn point we're going to make sure it's anchored. We're going to set can collide to false so that they can walk through it. And we're going to set transparency to one. Now what we can do is do the same as we did earlier and duplicate the spawns and move them around the map. You want to make sure you have enough spawns for all players in your game to be teleported to a different one. Because you don't want people to be teleported to the same spawn because then there would be spawn kill. And you also want it to be random so you don't know where you're going to spawn next. Alright, so I've added a few spawn points into my game. I've, I've got, uh, let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. We've got 11. So I'm going to just uh, select all of my spawn points. Press Ctrl G. And I'm going to call this model spawn points. Remember, I'm, I'm calling it spawn points with a capital S and P. So make sure that yours is exactly the same as mine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this spawn points model and we're just going to drag it inside our desert map. So each map needs to have a model called spawn points. And inside that model, there's going to be lots of spawn point parts where the player could be teleported to if you don't have spawn points in your map it's not going to work so now that we've got our first map what we're going to do is drag it into server storage and we're going to create a folder in server storage called maps so just click on the plus type in folder press enter and name this maps then we're going to drag our desert map into that folder and i know we said we'd be doing two maps but we'll just do one for now, and if it works, we might add a second one later on. So now that we've got our maps in there, we just need to do one last thing and insert a sword. Now, to keep this series short, I'm going to use a sword created by Roblox. Now, you can find this by typing sword in the toolbox and finding one, but most of them don't work, and some of them are outdated. So what I'll do is I'll put a link to the model for this sword in the description. You can take it 
and then go to my models and you'll be able to insert it. So I'm just going to copy it in and I'm going to paste it. Now this is the sword that we're going to be using. I'm going to take this sword and I'm going to drag it into server storage. Now that we've done that, what we can do is we can begin by creating a leaderboard for our players. So let's go to server script service, click on script, and then we're going to name this script stats. So what we want to do here is we want to create an event. An event is as it will listen out for something to happen. And when that specific thing happens, it will fire some code in a function. So what we want to do is we want to wait until someone's joined the game. So game.players.playeradded. Uh, game.players.playeradded colon connect function open bracket, close bracket, and drop a line. Now I just need to say, your code needs to look exactly like mine, because if it doesn't, then the script isn't gonna work, because this, this scripting language, Lua, is really picky. And if you spell something wrong, or forget to have a capital letter, then it's gonna throw an error Ooh. in the output. So if you see an error, make sure to double check your script against mine, because you've probably made a mistake. So this is going to run any code inside of it when someone joins the game. Now we want to have uh, a parameter here of player. This player here, this, this word player, is we're talking about the player that's going to enter the game. So any player that enters the game, whatever we do to this player uh, instance here, we're going to do to the player that joins the game. So if we give player 100 cash, we're going to give every player that joins the game 100 cash. So what we want to do is we want to create some leader stats. So to create a leaderboard at the top right of our screen, we have to create a folder called leader stats in the player. So we can say local leader stats equals instance.new folder like this. Leader stats dot name equals leader stats. Now leader stats has to be in lowercase, else the uh, leaderboard won't pop up. And we're just going to parent this leader stats folder so that it lives inside of the player's object, okay? So each player will have their own folder called leader stats. Now inside of that folder, we're gonna create a currency called cash. So we can say local, uh, well, you can call it whatever you want. You could call it cash, you could call it books, coins. Actually, let's go and call it books because that sounds quite cool. So local books equals instance.new, and it's gonna be an int value because it, it's an integer, so a whole number. And then we're gonna say books.name equals books. And we can set the value of books for now to zero. So any player that joins the game will start off with zero books. Now in the future, I'm gonna do a video on how to save your currency, and we're gonna be giving them a default value when they join, so maybe 50 cash when they join, but if they've already got saved data, we will load that data. So make sure that you're subscribed and you've liked the video so that you're ready for that. So what we need to do now is parent the books to the leader stats. So any currency value inside of leader stats is gonna show up on the leaderboard. So let's go ahead and play our game again and see if we have some leader stats. So there you go, you can see in the top right, we've got our leaderboard and it's counting currency books. And you can see in our player, we've got a folder called leader stats and inside of that folder, we've got books. Now, if we change the name of our books to points, you can see nothing updates. Now that's because we set in the script for it to be called books and you won't see that change. But if we change the value of books to say 500, you can see that we now have 500 books. So we can change the value of books and that will update. But if we change the name of the of the actual int value, it's not gonna update on the leaderboard. So we've got our books working perfectly fine. And what we can do now is begin scripting our sword fight game. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna click on the plus in server script service again, and we're gonna insert a script. And we're gonna call this script main script. Okay, so this is where we're going to do all the game coding, um, all the logic to see if, you know, someone's won or someone's killed someone. Uh, that's all going to happen here. So first thing we need to do is we need to create some variables. So we're going to start off by creating a variable. In fact, let's do a little comment. So a comment basically lets you know uh, you can write what's happening and the script will ignore it. So just a comment for yourself. 
So define variables. So variable just holds data. In this case, we're gonna hold the path to a service. So we don't have to keep saying the name to get to that path. So local replicated storage to begin with equals game colon get service replicated storage. Now what's replicated storage and what's it used for? So replicated storage, anything inside of it gets replicated to the player and so that it can be seen by all the players in the game and it can be seen by the server which is where these scripts run so inside of there we're going to have things like the status status value which we'll use to update the GUI at the top which usually says intermission or something like that and so that's where that's going to go we're also going to need the server storage and as you've seen already the server storage is where the sword goes and also where the maps are and that's only visible to the server, so any players won't be able to see that, so that they can't exploit the game. So game get service server storage, like that. We're also just going to create a variable for our maps folder, so we can say local maps folder equals server storage, and then we need to wait in case that folder hasn't been loaded into the game yet. So in case the script is running before the folder has been added. So we can say colon wait for child, and that will wait until that folder's into the game. So we can just say maps, because that's the name of the folder over here. We're then going to want to create a variable, which is for our status value. Now, we haven't added that yet, so let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to go into replicated storage, and insert a string value. And this string value is going to be called status. Now, you might have seen in some games that you have a nice little banner at the top of, of your game and it gives you information about the game. Usually it will say intermission when a new game is about to load. It might show you how long's left. So our main script, there's gonna be a value in replicated storage, which all players can see. And this value, we're gonna update it in the main script and all players in the game are gonna have a GUI on their screen, which will listen out to see if that value has been updated with new information. And if it has, it will relay that information to all the players. You'll see how this works later on, but for now, we're just gonna insert this value and we're gonna update it in the main script. And then later on, we're gonna design our GUI and make it so that it picks up the information from this value. So go back into the main script here, and what we're going to do is we're going to create our status value, now that we've added the value in. So local status equals replicated storage, and once again, it might not be in the game yet, so we have to say colon wait for child status. Now because these scripts run straight away when the game server is created, so there might be a bit of lag or something, and so we need to make sure all the objects in our game are loaded in before we start running the game. Last variable for now, we're just going to call it game length. So this is in seconds, how long you want each game to last for. I'm going to set mine to 50 seconds, okay? So this is just the amount of time in a game until all players are wiped out in case there's no winner. Because this is going to be a last man standing sort of game. Kind of like a battle royale. So last person standing wins. But if there's more than one person left and 50 seconds have passed, we're just going to end the game. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do the game loop. So this is just a repetitive loop that will run forever and ever and ever uh, until the game shuts down, loading up new games when another one's finished. So we can do a while loop here. So we can say while true do and drop a few lines and you can see we've got this end here. So a while true do loop will run any code inside of it forever until it either breaks because we've told it to break or if the condition at the top, which is currently set to true, is false. So let's say it was 2 plus 2 equals 4. That would run forever because 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. But if it was equal to 5, this would never run because 2 plus 2 is never going to be equal to 5. So instead of just setting it to a condition, if we want it to run no matter what, we can just set it to true. So what we want to do is we want to check to see if there are enough players in the game. So we can say, when it begins, we can say waiting for enough players. 
Now, this is what the status is going to show if not enough players are in the game. Because we need more two or more players for this game to work. Else, if there's only one player in the game, they're always going to win. So we have to wait for enough players. So we're going to set the status to this. And we're just going to repeat this. We're just going to repeat this code, this line of code. We're going to repeat it until... Uh, we'll give it a wait as well. Repeat wait until game dot players dot num players is greater than or equal to two now game dot players dot num players it's a number automatically updates with the number of players in the game and if it's uh, less than or equal to two then it's just going to keep showing this status value but if it isn't until it becomes greater than or equal to two we can do any code after it. In fact, let's just add a uh, a weight one in here because it, it's not very good to just have a, a small weight because a weight is 0 0.3 seconds. So if we're running this all the time, it's gonna make the script less efficient. So what we can do now is set the status value to intermission because now that there's enough players in the game, we can have a little a little delay until the next game begins. And we can do this for about five seconds, maybe maybe ten seconds, okay. So now that all players are in the game and we're ready to go, we can begin by creating a table and putting all players in the game at that time into it. So we're gonna call this table local players equals and then we can in fact let's call it PLRS, okay, just a shortened version of players. I'll pronounce it as players. This is a table. We're gonna put all the players in the game in it. And because if someone joins midway through the game, we don't know if they were part of the game when it started or they've just joined. So that's why we do this. So we want to loop through every single player in the game. So to do that, we can use a for loop. So for i, comma, player in pairs, game dot players colon get players with a pair of brackets after that, do. So for each player in the game, if the player's there, then we want to add them to that table by saying table.insert, then giving the name of the table, which can be players, and we want to insert that player into the table, and player is the current player that we're looping through, so we're just going to add that player into the table. So we're just going to add each player into players table, and then outside of here, we're just going to do a wait two seconds so that the player can see what's going on, and so that everything doesn't happen straight away. Now, next thing that we're gonna to need to do is select a map from the map folder, uh, randomly select one, and then load it into the game. And we'll do the part two. So make sure you click the thumbnail on your screen now so that you can go and watch the next part in this series. And don't forget to click on the Alvin Blocks logo to your left on screen now or below the video so that you subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so you never miss out on when I upload a new Roblox scripting tutorial. tutorial.